In this recording, we're going to take a look at how to configure Curity for um, step up authentication using two factor. Um, I have a configured system here with an authentication service. I have two authenticators. I have a username and password, simple username and password authenticator, and a duo authenticator recently added into the Curity identity server. One thing worth mentioning here, the dual authenticator is I've chained two authenticators. Um, so I have my username and password authenticator as a prerequisite uh, to the dual authenticator. So this uh, forces login for the username and password before the dual authenticator gets triggered. Then if we look at client that I have and going to be using uh, is this www client. If we go to the user authentication for this, I have both the username password authenticator and the duo authenticator here. Moving to OAuth tools to test this out. I'm going to run a code flow with my client. You can choose the Open ID scope here, for example. But when I run this, because both authenticators are configured for this client, I get the, to choose whether I want to use the username and password authenticator or the duo. If I choose the duo one, you can see that I do get a username and password prompt. So this is the username and password prerequisite authenticator. Um, that triggers this. I'm going to go back and start over and only authenticate with the username password authenticator. If we do that, I can then, I get a code and I can redeem the code to get my tokens. And we can see here that the ACR, the authentication context class reference, is indeed the username password authenticator. Now, the scenario here might be that a backend API would not allow me to execute certain functions based on the ACR. And in this case, what we want to do is trigger a step up authentication. So the API might be requesting um, or expecting a different ACR in order to allow access. Now, what can be done in the client here is we can select the ACRs. So we can, for example, select here that we need to enforce authentication with the dual authenticator. Uh, and this might be what the backend API is expecting. Now, if we run this, it goes straight to the duo authenticator. It doesn't, it, it didn't trigger the HTML authenticator. And the reason for this is single sign-on is enabled. And therefore, I don't get the HTML authenticator because I already authenticated using the HTML authenticator. So now we get to authenticate with a dual authenticator, so I got my username. Let's send a push notification to my device. Approve that on the device. And that gets me my tokens. Now we can see that the ACR here has changed. It's the duo ACR instead. If I would rerun this, We see that we get single sign-on. Um, I don't have to authenticate at all. And as expected, it's our duo ACR. We could enforce login here. Now we're still requesting or still uh, specifying that we want to, to enforce authentication for the duo authenticator. And if we enforce login, SSO is not going to be um, in effect. And now, instead, we get the HTML authenticator, which is, which is the prerequisite. We 
we then get the duo authenticator. And after that, the flow is the same as before, where we authenticate and approve the push notification on my device. And we have the, um, no, sorry, we have the duo ACR here. So that concludes this short demonstration on how to combine two authenticators, um, simple username and password, uh, and in this case, the duo authenticator to achieve uh, two-factor authentication in a step-up um, fashion. And we also utilized the single sign-on for the username and password part of it. Thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions or comments, um, info at security.io.